Uh, good day, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Claire Birunja, and I'm the Transport Systems Manager for ITDP Africa, and I'm based in Kampala. First, I would like to thank the International Transport Forum and the Urban Living Lab Center, the Ministry of Interior in Morocco, for organizing this webinar on decarbonizing transport in emerging economies. ITDP is a global non-governmental organization uh, with our headquarters uh, in New York. We focus on promoting equitable and sustainable transport systems worldwide, designing bus rapid transit systems, and we're also at the center of promoting walking and cycling initiatives. But for today's session, I'll be sharing about some of the best practices uh, in implementing our BRT systems, and also what are some of the things to avoid uh, in order to be able to meet the city's mobility goals. I'll draw some of this information from our recently uh, published BRT standard, and it will be great uh, if you can check it out at itdp.org. Currently, we face a lot of challenges with public transport in most of the cities that we live in. You find that most of the risk to provide these services is borne by the operator. In most of the cases, there will be limited government intervention. So what really happens is that services are not geared towards uh, passenger convenience, but rather towards profitability of the services. And this generally leads to poor service quality. Usually there will be an oversupply uh, on some of the routes, and in some other areas there will be no supply, which leads to queues, as you will see in this image. In absence of reliable and safe public transport, and as cities continue to grow, we are seeing an increase in the use of private cars, increased motorization. And usually the response is to widen the roads, add one more lane, two, and then also construct flyovers uh, to ease congestion. But the question that we should put for ourselves are, uh, is it tenable to continue widening roads? The more lanes we put, the more cars, and the cycle continues. And often, this is done without consideration for public transport, and you'll find the public transport vehicles are also competing with cars. This can only offer short-term benefits. As cities continue to grow, we need to be wise about the decisions we make and how we can equitably use the road space. For the same right of way with three lanes per direction, this can offer a capacity of up to 3,000 passengers per hour per direction. Uh, elevating and increasing just to add one more lane will only make a uh, little difference but if we add a uh, dedicated public transport space uh, for example dedicated brt this will significantly increase the capacity to almost more than 10 times uh, for the same road space so what then is a bus rapid transit system it's not just an old bus or any buses running on bus lanes so if your city has buses running in mixed traffic or buses running on painted cab side lanes, then that's not a BRT, as we will learn in the slides that follow. A BRT is a high quality, high capacity, and customer oriented uh, system. So in the next slides that follow, I'll go in more detail about the elements of the BRT system and point out what, of the, what are the, some of the things that we need to do best and what are some of the things we need to avoid in order to achieve a high quality transport system. So the BRT has uh, five key elements. It must have uh, a dedicated right of way, giving dedicated space uh, for the buses. It must have uh, a median bus alignment. There should be platform level boarding. Um, it must have special intersection treatments uh, to give priority at intersections. And there must be off board fare collection. So in the next slides, I'll go into these elements in more detail. So the first one uh, is dedicated um, right of way. So what that means is that uh, you provide a uh, dedicated space for buses only, and it can only be used uh, by buses so that it can give priority uh, to the buses. This is an example uh, of dedicated right of way in the Dar es Salaam uh, BRT system. It is important and, and a very critical element uh, to provide uh, this dedicated right of way so it can allow the buses uh, to move faster, giving them a speed advantage and allowing them to transport more people. So which essentially gives the system um, more capacity. 
Marrakech was um, one of the cities um, that started out uh, implementing BRTs um, in Africa. And this is also one of the good examples of providing um, dedicated right of way uh, for public transport on the BRT system. Uh, BRTs uh, can be implemented on streets um, with different circumstances. Even in downtown areas where the streets are quite narrow and, and congested, it's always possible uh, to prioritize uh, public transport. Uh, this is an example uh, of a street uh, in downtown uh, Dar es Salaam. Um, the conditions were pretty much uh, like the slide I showed before. Uh, vehicles parked on either sides, uh, pedestrians competing for space to go through, and public transport vehicles basically unable to go through efficiently. Uh, the city made a decision to prioritize uh, public transport, even in areas which are narrow. Uh, they prioritize uh, BRT, and uh, walking and cycling infrastructure in downtown of Dar es Salaam. And this has enhanced uh, the experience of uh, passengers, uh, pedestrians, and even the businesses downtown. So uh, in Marrakesh, in downtown, or in areas where there is limited uh, right of way, but there is activity, it is always uh, a great opportunity uh, to prioritize public transport and NMT use. Um, busway alignment uh, is another important uh, element uh, of the design of the BRT system. Placing uh, the bus lanes um, on the curb side presents a lot of challenges uh, with private vehicles moving in and out, uh, potentially uh, creating a lot of conflict, and this delays um, the speed uh, of public transport vehicles. Rather, we recommend that uh, the BRT lanes are built in the median, and this allows the buses uh, to move faster with limited interruptions. You might be asking, um, why don't curbside alignment or curbside bus lanes work? As you see uh, in this image, it is very easy for other vehicles to encroach on the space. And if there was a bus uh, moving uh, on this lane, it would have to get off uh, the bus lane and try navigate uh, on the mixed traffic lane. Another reason uh, not to consider curbside uh, lanes is that the turning movements of private vehicles uh, reduce the bus speed. Uh, in this image, you will see that uh, if there was a bus moving, they have to first wait for the private vehicles to turn. Uh, before the bus can proceed to move, which causes unnecessary delays uh, for public transport vehicles. Um, so the busway alignment uh, should be in the median, the BRT lanes should be in the median. And it's also always better to have the stations uh, in the median. It's always uh, better to have central stations because it reduces the construction costs and operational costs. Once passengers are within the stations, they can always uh, make easier decisions on which way they want to travel, as opposed to have uh, two separate uh, side stations. Uh, platform level boarding is another important aspect. Uh, it basically means that um, the level of the bus docking and the station platform uh, must be well aligned. And this is important because it affects um, the speed uh, of boarding and alighting of passengers. But also, most importantly, um, this interface also determines uh, whether the system can be accessed by passengers with limited mobility, such as persons with disabilities, children, and the elderly people. Uh, this is an example of um, what not to do and how to do it right. Uh, on the left, you'll see that um, a regular bus service, passengers have to queue up uh, and pay before they can board the vehicle. And uh, this causes a lot of delays um, as many people have to board before the vehicle can, can take off. And you also notice that there is uh, steps and this really makes it inconvenient uh, for people with disability. Rather, it's always uh, better to go with the BRT system with level boarding where it's easier and faster uh, for people to board. And there's also the convenience of people with disability to easily get into the system. Um, this is an architectural layout um, of how it should be designed. Um, the bus should be able to dock very close uh, to the platform and to ensure that um, we typically design a platform extension to ensure a safe distance between the bus and the station so that people both uh, with or without disability can easily move between the bus and the station uh, safely. 
and we also design um, a high ceiling uh, with a partial roof cover to ensure that during the different uh, weather conditions, whether it's raining or uh, too hot, uh, the passengers can get uh, protection uh, and have shade so that uh, it's more convenient for them. Um, if you implement um, a regular bus service, you typically have to design uh, shelters. And when they're also not well designed, um, as you can see in this image, there is limited protection uh, for passengers as they wait for the bus. Uh, it becomes very inconvenient and discourages people from using public transport. And also one of the reasons uh, that uh, cities choose to uh, build the bus shelters and uh, adopt uh, the regular bus services is because they think um, that uh, BRTs must be designed uh, with large stations and that distorts the public realm. But uh, many cities have found ways uh, to integrate uh, the public realm um, with the station design, making the areas and the communities interactive and more vibrant, as you see uh, for this specific example uh, in Colombia. Uh, intersection treatments are also uh, one of the key elements um, to have a well-designed BRT system. And the reason for uh, making this intersection treatments is basically to reduce the bus delays at intersection. Uh, of course, it's always better if there is no intersection, but where there is an intersection, we must prioritize uh, the bus movement and restrict uh, the turning movement at those locations. Um, typically, um, it's always better to have um, a maximum uh, of two phase uh, signal cycle at intersections and where there is need uh, to make um, uh, right turn movements as an example um, this slide basically shows what are some of the options uh, to reroute um, the buses so that they can comply uh, with the two-phase signal cycle uh, this is an example of an intersection treatment um, in Dar es Salaam um, this is along uh, one of the BRT uh, corridors you will see on the right um, that the right turn movements have been restricted and there is also a signage on how um, the vehicles that intend uh, to move on the other side uh, must be rerouted in order to maintain uh, a two-phase signal cycle. And this generally improves um, the bus speeds. Um, the last and also very important uh, element is off-board fare collection. Uh, this means that passengers intending to use the system uh, need to pay uh, before uh, they can wait in the station and when the buses uh, when the bus docks um, they can just uh, quickly uh, board the vehicle and this is very important because it reduces uh, the travel time and also generally improves uh, the passenger experience especially for caregivers uh, people traveling with goods people with disability and also the elderly and this is just to highlight the advantages I just mentioned. Um, uh, on the left is uh, basically what not to do, and on the right is um, how to do it um, better. Um, the advantages are quite clear. Um, there is uh, better convenience uh, for passengers. Uh, there are fewer delays. Um, utilizing different uh, technologies um, to prepay uh, reduces uh, revenue leakages, which are very important um, for the financial viability uh, of the systems. And also we can collect ridership data, which can be used for service optimization. And we can utilize uh, various payment uh, mechanisms. Um, some systems are using uh, paper cards with uh, barcodes. Um, some are using um, smartphones, uh, bank cards, uh, transport cards, and these are all um, contribute an enhanced uh, experience uh, using the system. And that's um, all the five uh, key principles. Um, I hope to engage with some of you. I'll provide uh, my email at um, in the last slide. Um, feel free to reach out uh, for more information. Uh, if you have any questions or comments and you can also find more information on our recently um, launched BRT standard uh, you can find it on our website um, www.itdp.org and for more also information on how um, to transition to modern bus systems um, you can find um, a detailed guide uh, in our quick guide to bus sector modernization um, document which you can also find on our website 
This was developed uh, in partnership uh, with ITDP, people-oriented cities, and with support from the African Development Bank. I look forward um, to improved uh, cities uh, and also to connect with you. Bye.